Hey guys, so today I thought I'd just do a quick little segment on problems, mistakes, and accidents. So as I'm going, I don't want you know people think, oh, just all sunshine and rainbows over here. I mean, <laughs> there's a fair amount of editing going on, okay? So I want to just point out some of the stuff that's gone wrong, mistakes I've made, and also for the if you've watched the series and you see things that I've done wrong that you know I haven't corrected, then please point them out or even if you have a better idea a better way of doing it put in the comments and then the next person to build one can make theirs better anyway uh, let's start with problems so first problem I had was with the inverter so let's take a look at that so I was getting ready to do some of the initial testing on the inverters and before I did that I started poking around with the multimeter to check continuity on grounds and stuff and I happened to check the ground the common and the AC hot one and two out of the inverter and found that they were all tied. So they're shorted. So I took a closer look and I started to see that there was some damage to this inverter. So let's take a look. Here's where it's pushed in. You can see this one's knocked in. Um, compared to this guy, this is not knocked in. Look at the tabs on the good one. Here, the tabs are pushed up. This whole case got pushed up when it was dropped or hit or whatever. And this buckled right here. The tab. And this is the other side of the tab. So basically, it got hit. It looks like it got hit, and this is even pushed in. Looks like it got hit here and slid that whole thing up and probably broke something inside. Look at that. And look at this. This thing is smashed in right here. And that's right where it's smashed in. So internally on the packaging, it is damaged on the packaging. So that makes you think maybe this happened while it was being shipped. Let's see what else we can find. You know, that's that side. Here's the box. This is the other side of the box. All right. There's nothing there. All right, so this would have gone like that. All right. Yeah, just like that. And so it is smashed in right there. It makes you think maybe it was just flat out dropped straight. Bam! And that's what put that indentation right there. Possibly. The whole thing is indented. Look at that. Even over to here. Aha! This guy. There's the other one. Nothing indented on this one. Look at that. There's that guy. And look at this box. Indented big time. This thing got dropped. All right, so let's talk about some of the mistakes. Number one, uh, you're not supposed to put your battery box right under your equipment. And it even says that in the manual. So why not? It doesn't say. But I can think of a couple of good reasons. So number one, if you didn't have a lid on here and you're up here working with wrenches and stuff and a wrench falls down and makes a connection, that's going to be really bad. So that's one thing. You don't want stuff falling down into here. The other thing I can think of is, yeah, it does produce hydrogen gas and, you know, if it's vented properly, it shouldn't be a problem. But if the venting were to break down or something that hydrogen gas was coming up through here and there were any kind of spark up in here maybe that's a potential problem um, I felt with you know I have a rule of I'm never working up here with this lid open so that's number one and I you know I've got a pretty decent venting system so all right here's another little mistake um, I don't know if it's a little mistake or not but 
I think it's not, not too big of a problem, but this vent is designed to be vertical. Okay, it's got a little plastic plate in there that when you turn the fan on, it blows the plate up and air can come out. When the fan goes off, the plate, you know, gravity drops the plate and then, you know, makes kind of a seal so that you can't back, uh, air won't come back in from the outside. So by laying it down like this, which a lot of people do, uh, that little piece of plastic now is not going to close by gravity. So it's not really going to seal off. Um, it kind of does when, if you get like a wind blow or something and then it starts to push air back up into here, it kind of pushes that plastic and kind of closes off anyway. Okay, here's another thing. Um, my backup generator wiring, I use six gauge. And the plug that I'm using really isn't rated for six gauge. It's only rated up to eight gauge. So, um, you know, I mean, it's better because it's heavier wire, carry more current, but it's really not needed for the, you know, it's only a 30 amp plug. So you could, I could have used, I could have used this orange type wire here even for it, which I think this is 10 gauge. But, um, you know, problem is using this heavy gauge wire, it does go into the connectors, but um, there's not really enough room for them to bend the way they should coming out of there. So I might even actually go back and change that to, a, to some of this smaller gauge wire. We'll see, but that's just a little, a little thing. Okay, so that's it for mistakes. Now let's talk accidents. I've had one accident so far, and I did get electrocuted. I had 50 volts coming up here. So you got 50 volts from here, and you got 50 volts in this bus bar to this ground. I was wiring up my battery monitor kit here. I just put this in here, tacked it up, up this end. And here, tacked that up, and I was wired this side on, and I was arranging the wire, and I kind of pulled this out, and it fell. And when it hit right here, you had all that power from the battery going through this little wire, and it exploded, man. It was like a flash, like a, I don't know, like, like you were arc welding, you know? If you ever seen that, like that, boom, and it was boom, and this thing just started throwing pieces of metal of this wire, started flying everywhere, burned my arm, melted through my shirt, burned my side a little bit, nothing major, but little, and I, I ended up like on the floor, and this thing just danced here for a second, and but melted that off pretty quick, and that was kind of it. But anyway, that was that was exciting. But uh, lesson learned is, hey, stuff in this area isn't really fused. I mean, it is, but it's 200 amp fuse. So little stuff like this is just going to sit there and melt, you know, because you're not going to hit the 200 amps. But um, just something to be aware of. That was, now I've got these, not that it helps that much, but I did get this little fused wire that I'm going to use for little stuff, you know. Okay, so that's it for problems, mistakes, and accidents, part one. So who knows what's coming up ahead, you know. You're going to see the falling off the roof, the who knows what's coming up. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.